Hi, I've clicked on today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday, September 30th, 2015. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service. Well, here's Hurricane Joaquin continuing to strengthen in earnest today. The morning recon mission found a pressure of 972 millibars and winds above 70 knots, and so that's about 80 miles per hour. And it's likely that Joaquin has continued to strengthen a little bit today. The new recon mission is currently inbound. That plane will be sampling the storm during the making of this video, and after this is posted and you're watching it, that data will likely be out, and we'll know how strong Joaquin has become this evening. It's possible that it's already a Category 2, but we will see very soon. You can see an eye trying to develop here that darker spot in visible imagery today with convective bursts around it. Seems to be having a little bit of trouble getting a closed eye wall. The latest microwave pass does cut the storm in half, unfortunately, but there is enough data here to see that there's still asymmetric convective bursts all around the eye wall, which implies that the wall may not be fully closed and or symmetric. And until that occurs, the eye will not be able to clear out and get that warm air column in the eye, which allows the air pressure to lower and the winds to increase. But once that eye does clear out on satellite imagery, the storm may very quickly become a much stronger hurricane tonight or tomorrow if that eye does clear out. You can see some of the outflow expanding a little bit more toward the north here. You might be able to see on the video this boundary of milky white thin clouds. This is the cirrus outflow toward the north, indicating less shear out of the north, pushing the clouds toward the south like there was yesterday. There is still some shear, uh, but it is lightening, and the storm has had no problem intensifying despite the shear that does exist. And so this uh, is likely to continue intensifying over some of the very warm water that exists here, very deep, warm ocean water. And so although the hurricane is moving slowly, there is plenty of heat uh, to uh, come out of the ocean without upwelling being a concern at this point. But this is quickly becoming uh, a big hurricane uh, event for the Bahamas as the storm continues to drift almost due south, especially during the last several hours here, and continues to move a bit south of the forecast track. And this is becoming a big deal now for the Bahamas, and especially islands like San Salvador here, which are directly in the path of where the hurricane is expected to turn toward the west here and eventually to the north over the next couple of days. But this entire process is going to be very slow. This hurricane is going to be near the Bahamas for at least the next 48 hours, possibly even the next two and a half to three days before fully clearing the island chain. And so we're going to be dealing with big flooding issues in the spiral bands on the south side and tropical storm or even hurricane conditions for some of these islands. There are hurricane warnings out all along the chain now, and this is becoming a very significant situation and all preparations should really be wrapping up for this storm as it is getting very close now with weather deteriorating quickly on these islands over the next several hours as the eye continues to drift toward the south. Now, after uh, the Bahamas deal with Joaquin, the big question mark remains with the storm. Will it impact the U.S. eastern seaboard? And if so, what kind of impacts will there be? Well, here's the current model track forecasts for the storm. And if you saw yesterday's video, you'll note that they're a little bit closer together today with most of the models showing what appears to be a general track toward the Carolinas or the mid-Atlantic states in three to four or five days. However, the big fly in the ointment today has been that the very reliable European model continues to take the storm harmlessly out to sea. This is the European forecast from this morning showing the storm still in the Bahamas on Friday morning. That's how long this could be sitting there uh, is a couple of days in the island chain, which is why this is a bad situation for the Bahamas. And uh, you note the trough over the southeast in green and yellow. This is what is supposed to pick up the storm and bring it toward the coast as the two interact, but the European says no, and as we go out toward the weekend, the storm just moves out to sea here toward the northeast, harmlessly away from the United States. Now, what's the big difference between the European and the other models? Well, if we compare it to the GFS for the same time on Friday morning here. Here's the GFS, valid Friday. Here's the European. Note the big difference. The European is much farther south and the GFS farther north here. And this is only, you know, 100 miles or so in two days, but this makes a big difference because, again, the steering currents are weak here. This is a sensitive situation where we have a trough digging down, negatively tilted and cutting off, trying to interact with a hurricane, and there's, you know, another low to the east where X Ida is. There's a ridge to the north, and all of these things are acting to tug 
on Hurricane Joaquin. And Joaquin's strength makes a big difference here and its size as well because the stronger and bigger the storm is, the more likely it is to interact with the trough, but also its proximity to the trough. And if we get a cutoff low here in a hurricane, what will tend to happen is that they will try to rotate around each other in a counterclockwise fashion. That's what is supposed to slingshot Joaquin into the United States. But if the hurricane is too far away from the trough, then it may miss it entirely. And that seems to be what the European says will happen, is that since the European is much slower and keeps Joaquin in the Bahamas for longer, the distance between these is too large, and so this ends up just escaping toward uh, the weakness out to the northeast where X Ida is, and it does not get picked up and interact with this trough intimately. And that is why it avoids the US during its last couple of runs. And now the National Hurricane Center has looked at all of this data and decided that the most likely track is more toward the west, not the European solution, but something that could threaten the United States here, forecasting now a landfall in the mid-Atlantic, perhaps over Cape Hatteras, but the exact details of this track should not be focused on. This is still three, four, five days away, and there's no way yet to pin down in this delicate of a steering situation exactly where Joaquin will move and exactly when it will get there. The next couple of days will be very key as it meanders very slowly near the Bahamas and in a couple of days we will likely know a lot more than we know today. This is a very delicate situation but it should be uh, a, people should be aware on the eastern seaboard that if Joaquin does take this kind of a track it's going to be a very very ugly weekend because this is the kind of rainfall totals that the models are printing out right now uh, in this kind of a setup with a cutoff trough digging in over the southeastern U.S. This is already going to be a heavy rain situation without the hurricane, but if the hurricane piles in, that's a second round of very, very heavy rain. We're talking feet of rain possible in some places if this kind of a, a situation comes to pass, and this is going to be a big deal, not to mention the regular hurricane impacts of storm surge, wind, and all the rest. Flash flooding going to be a big concern, and uh, in general flooding for days uh, possible if this kind of situation pans out. So this is something to pay attention to closely if you're on the eastern seaboard, especially from the Carolinas through the mid-Atlantic states. And although there is still a door open for Joaquin to escape, the current NHC forecast is for this to become a problem for the coast. So make sure you have your hurricane plan ready just in case uh, as this delicate situation pans out. If Joaquin ends up targeting your state, just make sure you're ready in case. Right now impacts, the details, the exact location of a potential landfall, all still question marks, but the general idea will become clearer over the next day or two and we will continue monitoring Joaquin very closely. Stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for the latest updates and your local National Weather Service office for local information. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.